Are you ready to thrive? It is time to take action. Hello, everyone. This is Jen, and you are listening to Thrive by Jen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. What is the result of thriving? Body confidence, mind fulfillment, and soul synchronicity. Tune in to hear about these elements and the scientifically and spiritually proven action steps to stand in confidence, love from within, be unstoppable in fulfilling your dreams, and create synchronicity so you can flow toward abundance and love. Hear real stories that will inspire you to take action today and be a catalyst for positive change in this world through creating your own Thrive Life. Let's do this. Feel empowered and ignite your soul with Thrive by Gen Radio starting now. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Monday, April 1st. It's April already. It's crazy. Uh, You're listening to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. I am super excited to be here. I'm always grateful and excited to be with everybody. And this week, it's interesting. I always share with everyone about what I am going through and, and then and take it here to the radio because I, I love testimony, you know, I love real life stories and our stories don't always match up, but, but they're similar and we can find, uh, you know, little nuances in each other's lives because we are so connected and we can take that information and, and it be so helpful. So what led me to today's show about love, but specifically about being loving is it, it sort of came off of back in February, we did a four week series on, on loving the enemy. And a lot of it had to do with bullying. And, but overall it's, it's uh, what I've been so drawn to is about loving my enemy. And, uh, and a lot of this show today will be biblically based. Uh, however, it's, Right. I mean, you know, we're, we're commanded to love our enemy. And for me, spiritually, I, I, I want to do that. I want, I want to be loving and I want to exist in a loving state. And so part of the process of doing that is, is looking in the mirror and, and questioning, I question myself about my behaviors and my actions and my beliefs. And, and if I'm putting the word into practice, if I'm actually taking action on the word. And so I started really honing in on this loving my enemies. And and part of what was what was driving me was I was confused ab- about loving my enemies. Uh, because what has happened and what happens a lot in in my everyday life in society is that my enemies tend to leave my life. Uh, they tend to exit. So maybe a, a, a relationship, let's say a friendship, takes a wrong turn, and and it, and it's just it's it's the parties are choosing not to mend it. What happens is that the person tends to leave my life. And again, we've we've spoken about closed doors and closed, you know, don't open a closed door. And and this is a this is a little different in that I'd like to live with my enemies. I would like to to grow alongside of them. And and part of it too is that, you know, some days it feels almost impossible to escape the unkindness that goes on, right? We come face to face with impatience, um, pride, right? Our egos get in the way. We come face to face with um, anxiety and anger. I mean, this is, this is every day. This could happen in the store. So I, I, I was, um, I was questioning myself whether or not uh, I was being loving, whether or not I was really living amongst my enemies, which in turn, uh, really I'm living amongst my brothers and sisters, you know, because at the end of the day, showing love and being loving uh, puts a whole new perspective on the relationship. So I, I wanted to share with you today about being loving. I post a lot about, about, being loving and and I and a lot of people post about being more loving and, and then I started to question myself well what does that mean what does it mean to be more loving what is it um, you know love is love is a lot of things and for me I've 
I'm I'm evolving into into having loving relationships and existing in love, existing being loving, being a loving person amongst the world. And so it's, you know, it's I, my sister, my brothers, right, my kids, our family and our immediate friends that we're with together all the time. For me, it's a little bit easier for you to describe, for me to describe to you about my loving relationship and and, and what I do in that relationship. Because when it comes to my kids, I mean, that's, right, um, when you love somebody so much, that's almost an easy explain. That's an, you know, you can see yourself being loving. And I, and I think that that's a great base to start from. And I question myself, well, can I be that loving to strangers? Can I be that loving to uh, somebody who got really impatient with me in a store? Can I be that loving to, you know, the person standing next to me? So it was just a really, the past few weeks has, it's been an amazing uh, journey. I've meditated a lot with God and he's shown me a lot that I'm going to share with you today about, about being loving, about loving our enemies, right? About, uh, gosh, it's like so, it's so selfless. And, and what's been so amazing about the experience is that it's, you think it's, it's going to be, you think you're going to miss out and, and you don't, you gain so much, you gain so much. And, and so, and I guess what I mean by that is you, gosh, right. Somebody gets you so mad and you, and you, you know, maybe it's a really good friend that you just, your relationship has fallen apart and there's hurt and there's anger and there's all these emotions that don't belong to love. And we hold on to that. You know, we hold on to that. And so my quest in being more loving was over this this past month was to uh, really let those feelings go, but more so actively pursue being loving. So actively, uh, you know, make that my state, make that my way of existing. And gosh, it was, um, it was it was hard and rewarding. And I'm so grateful for coming out the other side because I really have such a deeper understanding now of, of being more loving and acting more loving and what that means. And for me personally, what it's done for me, uh, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a wonderful, it's such a wonderful, um, new level of, of existing. I, I've let so much go and now seeking to be loving to the world is, uh, gosh, it's so rewarding. It's so fulfilling. It fills me up. It's, there's so many things that I, um, uh, I have a new perspective on, like it's changed other, you know, aspects of my life. It's changed, uh, you know, my, my own close relationships. It's changed my thoughts. It's changed the way that I look at material things. It's changed the way that I look at, uh, at goals, at my physical self. Everything has, if you could picture, you know, the sunrise and the sun like coming up and it just starts beaming and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. That's what has happened. So I can't help but want to share that here with you today. And I invite everyone who's who's listening and who will listen to this and who's watching is to to be more loving and and to really put that into action. And even and, and especially when you don't want to um, for me Sometimes we we need for for me the the reason for it is because I I follow God I respond to God I want to do things I I want to obey Him I want to do things to get closer to Him to build my relationship with God so that for me was a big driving force so in those moments that I didn't want to be loving <laughs> I would have you know 
my thoughts of God running through my through my brain and my heart for me to 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 take the leap and just see what it felt to be loving and then to uh, to to follow it through. So let let's kick off. Uh, I just want to kick off a little bit before we hit break, but part of God is love. I mean, there's, there's, there's multiple places that we find that in the Bible. Um, right. And there's no greater love than, than him giving us his son and his son dying for us. And so my first step in being more loving was really taking that in, was taking in someone else making such a sacrifice for me. And what that helped me then do is relate that to my everyday life about the seriously minor sacrifices that I am asked to make on a daily basis. There is, I've never been asked to make that at such a, a, such a great sacrifice. And so my perspective started to change about these minor and and people might call them like uh obstacles or people might you know we might consider them like little nuances that disturb our day um little things the day didn't go according to plan so i i I transform that into these minor sacrifices that i'm asked to to be made during the day right because sometimes plans change sometimes um things don't go according to the day doesn't go according to what i expected it to go right and we talked about expectations in another show about having those expectations so this is another way of uh, of letting those ex- expectations go because as those sacrifices came up throughout my day i could relate it to a bigger plan right? A, a bigger plan for me or for the person who, who was part of, of the change. Maybe it was a friend, a child, you know, another parent, something with the school, something with, with work. Um, but again, I could put the perspective of the sacrifice in place because the original sacrifice that was made for us was just literally pure love. And so if you can take just a moment as your first step of, of, of thinking about the sacrifices that you're asked to make, it's nothing. There, it's nothing compared to what was done for us. And so my heart started to open with this one simple revelation, with this acceptance, with, and it was accepting the love that was given to us. Because part of giving and receiving, right? We need to receive, um, and we'll, we'll we're going to take a short break, and we'll talk more about that. Because receiving love is a huge part of us giving love, and so and 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 part of that process of receiving is receiving um, what was given to us through through that act. So when, let's take a short break. When we get back, we're going to dive right back into this because uh, I am feeling a lot of love today. You're listening to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Hey, welcome back. All right, I want to dive right back in just because I, I usually run out of time with all the things that I'd like to talk about. All right, so this is about us. This is loving actions that we can do daily and, uh, and it, which, which brings us to being more loving, right? So it's about, it's about our actions and what we do. So the the first thing that we mentioned that we talked about is is thinking about the the sacrifices that we're asked to make on it on a daily basis and realizing that they're in in comparison to the sacrifice that was made for us through Jesus it's very small the sacrifices are small and it it's very uh sobering to realize that you know that there, it's just there are little nuances that happen in a day and and to be more loving around them to to just you know if you're if our, our if our day is changed up then there's a reason if our if you know if it's it's we were called to do something else during the day then there's a reason behind it 
the other thing, and this this feeds right into um, into into being more loving, but also realizing that the sacrifices that we make daily are small in comparison, is to be patient. Patience is huge part of being more loving. Um, I noticed it yesterday. It was interesting. Yesterday was a, a, a weird day for me. Sundays are, 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 I noticed are a strange day for me. I think it's, it's like a combination of the end of the week, but also the beginning of the next week. And I tend to, um, for being as grounded as I am when I start out the day, I tend to unravel a little bit um, towards the end of the day. And I realize that patience is a big part of that. And, and yesterday I could see myself and hear myself losing patience. And I then could compare it to uh, having patience and the difference of, of that gap is love. So, so being more loving is the act of being more patient. So it's about having patience. It's about being patient. So we can, um, you know, there's, the, there's I, I want to focus um, more so on the attributes of loving and, and versus doing things to grow, right? So we have to grow our patience. And there's there are steps that we can take to grow our patience. And one of them being, you know, the, being the self-talk of, of stating that you are patient. And also when you feel that feeling boiling up inside of you of being of of the impatientness, then you can take a step back. And for me, I like to say a prayer. I was praying a lot yesterday because I could feel the impatience growing. But what was so beautiful was I just could step outside of myself and see that being loving, patience is part of that. And so what it helped me to do is, right, my goal and my my desire is to become more loving, be a more loving person, and so patience is an attribute of that. So um, it, it's a big revelation, right? When you can, somebody might say to you, "Well, you should really be more loving." Well, what does that mean? Patience. Part of that is patience. Patience is what that means. So start practicing patience. Start practicing um, being patient with others. Being patient to yourself. Being patient in your work being patient in life. You know, everybody is, you get into the car and you're racing to get to your, your work or you're running late. Um, we'll leave earlier, you know, practice that patience. And if you are running late, accept that you're running late. Again, practice that patience. That in turn will, will that's an attribute of, of growing into being more loving. What's something else that we can do? We can be generous. You know, I've, I, again, I, 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 you know, part of me questioning this was, am I, am I loving, right? And so, and then it fed into, am I, am I loving amongst my enemies? And again, patience with enemies, that's a huge part of it. How many people have, you know, look in your life about friendships that maybe have gone sour or brother, sibling relationships that have gone sour. Have you, given them patience? Have you practiced patience? Are we impatient with, um, like I know with my brother, I'm very impatient with my brother. He's, he's very different from me. And, and if I'm impatient with him, I'm not being loving. And so practicing patience with him, right, which is, which is, it's a practice. You're not going to be perfect, but it's a great place to start to practice patience with whom uh, we consider enemies. And, and again, too, enemies, you know, there's, there's different levels of enemies. Um, I want you to look at that as well. I want you to look at, you know, as, you know, my brother is my brother and I love him, but there are times when him and I are enemies. We just, we don't get along. And so it's a perfect opportunity for me to be more loving. So, um, okay, being generous. So there's, there's two aspects of generosity that I, I want to talk uh, about. The first one is, is in the material sense. It's about, um, you know, get about giving, right? About giving material things. Uh, but the other is, it's not just about um, giving dollars and cents. An another part of being generous is giving a kindness. It's about encouragement. It's about doing good works for others. So 
if, if take a step back and look at generosity as more about kindness and more about empowering and encouraging and that we could do through words we can also do it through acts right doing good works for one another however we can do it quickly with our words we can do it quickly with phone calls with text messages with emails you know so that's that's another attribute of that lovingness of being more loving is that does somebody come it is all of a sudden do you think of a friend do you think of someone do you think of a neighbor and you're like oh i should reach out to them but you don't well reach out to them it it doesn't um being loving what i found over this last month is it's it doesn't really have anything to do with the other person in the sense of how they respond they don't if they don't if I text somebody and, and I'm, I'm lo- being loving to them because I want to be loving, it's none of my business whether or not they respond. Uh, but if I got that person on my heart, then, then I'm, going, I'm going to reach out to them. I want to reach out to them. And I'm not doing it to get a response. Again, too, this is about building up being more loving. It's about, I kind of equate it to like, you know, you have this basket of, of um, seeds, you know, a bucket of seeds, and you're going to plant in the garden, and you just plant it, you just plant them, and then you walk away. Well, that's about being more loving. It's about planting those seeds all over the place, just go out and be loving. And just let the, you know, maybe the flowers will bloom a year from now. And again, too, it's just, it's, um, it, it's it that it's not about the bloom. It's about throwing the seeds. It's about sowing the seeds, about putting it out there. So, so being generous, but uh, but look at it as from a kindness perspective, from an encouraging others perspective, from saying hi to people, from making eye contact to people, from engaging. People want to be heard, and part of being loving and act of being loving is hear them. And just listen and just talk and just be that smile, be that kind word, be that, you know, um, that shoulder to lean on. So those are all acts of uh, being generous that don't involve money, uh, that don't involve um, giving money, right? We have time. We have, and again, too, um, part of being loving, an attribute of, of loving is even if it's one minute of time, that makes a difference. You know, one minute times 365 days is a lot of time, you know? So it doesn't have to be, you know, don't let, don't let uh, all or nothing hold you back, right? Just look at it as little, a little bit at a time, little by little, little by little, by little, by little, does a lot. It does a real lot. So, so start little and focus on that loving, on being, on having that loving feeling towards another person through these actions that we're talking about. Um, and, and with money, and I don't want you to, I, I don't want to stop. Um, it's interesting. We we're talking about missions yesterday with missions, um, you know, going out into uh, whether it be local missions or, or at home in the United States or foreign missions, uh, right? We're either on a mission or we're giving to a mission. So I don't want people to hold back giving money when they can, uh, when it's in your budget. I just want to share with you that generosity is does not have to be tied to money. Uh, that's just you know, that's something that our society has, that we as humans, we've, we've created that. So, so don't hold back because generosity is, it's an attribute of loving. So really it's, it's right. Generosity is that uh, feeling, that act of being generous to another person um, and, and whether that, that the money is a tool. Um, so you have plenty of tools within yourself to use that to, to be loving to somebody else. So we're going to take a short break and we get back. We're going to jump right back into this list. You're listening to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, welcome back to Thrive by Jen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. All right, we're going to dive right back in about about being more loving and what what that means. And so, um, don't withhold forgiveness. You know, that was a big uh, revelation for me over this past month. And you know, even forgiveness, we've we've you know, I, I've seen it said, I've seen it out there in the world time and time again. I've, I've said it myself, forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is for you. And, and it truly is. Forgiveness sets us free. And it also brings us closer to our, our, our journey to uh, uh, journey with God uh, on our faith journey. See, forgiveness, if you think about it, is, uh, you know, I, I, mess up a lot during the day, right? I have not nice thoughts. I have uh, jealousy or I have envy. And I ask for the Lord's forgiveness because at the end of the day, you know, part of that process is I don't want to have those thoughts. I, I want to be in a state of being love and, and being loving. So, so part of the process is releasing releasing those thoughts. And, you know, I'm, I'm always asking for forgiveness and, uh, and constantly being forgiven. And so I, you know, I started to ask myself, well, who am I then to withhold forgiveness on another person? It just wasn't, it didn't, it didn't seem very loving to me. It didn't, you know, it was, it was the, in, in my, you know, meditation and, and having this revealed to me, it was the opposite of being loving. And so, and again, too, part of this was right when I started this conversation, this was about me learning to live with my enemies and being loving to love my enemies. And so forgiving them what I, what I, needed to do and what the Lord showed me was to separate the person from the behavior. So, and once I did that, then I could understand that, you know, I've had, I've done things that I needed to be forgiven for from other, from other people. And I'm not that person anymore. And so to hold that behavior against me, I've let it go. And so if someone is holding that behavior against me, that's on them. That's, that's hurting them. So I, I hope you see that distinction about how forgiveness is for us. Um, forgiveness is for us. Forgiveness is about, you know, separating the person from the behavior and forgiving that person for that behavior. And so in amongst living amongst you with our enemies, um, that doesn't mean it's not an excuse. It's not, you're not condoning it. You don't even have to hang out with that person, but it is about forgiving and letting go of what was done. So, uh, even, even, um, I think forgiveness is, this is a wonderful, a wonderful process to, talk it over with someone that you trust, Uh, a friend that, you know, is not part of the forgiveness process, somebody who you can, you know, a friend, a relative, uh, someone, a coach, a professional who you can talk through and, uh, and, and, and talk through the process with them, you know, get your pain out, release your pain and separate the person from the behavior and start to forgive that person. This leads me into a big part of what I love about being loving and also um, helping with forgiveness is praying. So I pray for people. I pray and they're little prayers. Sometimes they're long prayers. And, and I just, part of being loving is wanting others to experience blessings, experience God's blessings. For me, in my faith, there's no better blessing than being blessed by God. So and being loving is I want that for everyone. I want everyone to experience blessings. So, so incorporating, um, 
prayers for people, well wishes, right? It's about wishing well for someone other than yourself. And when you start to do that, you start to, again, you're, you're giving and receiving, you're expanding your heart, you're opening your heart, you're becoming more loving. And uh, it's just, it's so wonderful. It's such a incredible feeling. It's so fulfilling. And, uh, and it's about it's about, uh, I, I, I look at, it's like filling your cells with, with love, right? I mean, the more loving you are, the more your body is going to experience that love because you're just, you know, you're just coming from this incredible place. So, so another action that I do is I pray for people. I, um, and it's interesting because I, I, I haven't always done that. And, and uh, in fact, I have a pastor friend who, uh, she's so wonderful. Her name's Lily. She prays for people all the time and her prayers are so beautiful. So I use a lot of her prayers as examples. Uh, but what I noticed was I, I would read her prayers for someone else and it would make me feel good. And so I started when I was doing this process, I was like, boy, I was like, I wonder if I started praying for people, if it would make me feel good. And, and it does, it does. And, and it's not, it's not about selfishness or unselfishness. I mean, I, I want to act more loving. And so acting more loving and being more loving is about wanting uh, the best for others, wanting other people to be healthy, wanting other people to have successes, wanting other people to have love, to feel love. So, uh, so praying for people was really a beautiful action step that I took in making myself more loving. What's something else? Uh, this one I loved. Uh, this was to um, keep your promises. What does that mean? Well, it's about um, truth. It's about being truthful. It's about keeping your word. It's about saying something um, and really meaning it. Not just, not just saying something. Um, you know, we've become so, you know, words mean a lot. They mean so much. And we've become um, a society where people just say things, just, they just say them. And sometimes they're mean and sometimes they're nice, but they're just, they just get them out. It's like, you can't, it's like, you almost don't want to hold on to the words. And so you're just happy to get them out. And when we're not really thinking about whether those words are loving, if they're building somebody up, if they're encouraging somebody, right? We just want to get them out. And so if we focus on keeping our promises, you know, words are promises, what we say to somebody. And so, you know, we, we, we sort of, um, we, we, you know, uh, saying I love you to somebody is part of a promise. It's part of saying that I love you and I'm, I'm, you know, with that love comes ways that I'm going to behave or that you can uh, count on me behaving certain ways. So it's very important. I, I wanted to, I wanted to use, I wanted to use the term keep your promises because it was, it made me realize how powerful my words were to other people for other people. So when I focused on making my words mean that I was keeping my promises to somebody, I really wanted to focus on being more loving. I wanted to focus on love. I wanted to focus on kindness and generosity and see how it all comes together. It's all intertwined. So I put the responsibility on on me keeping my promises, which in turn caused me, right, my actions to be more loving. So it was really, it was, uh, it was, it was so amazing and such a blessing. And it's also about, you know, about being consistent, right? Loving is about consistency. It doesn't, it's not about perfection. It's not about doing everything right all the time, but it's about consistency, and, um, and right, we're forgiving others for shortcomings, just like we ask for forgiveness for our shortcomings, right? So again, it's that whole, everything is intertwined. 
and wanting to be more loving, having that as the goal, having that as our new level of existence causes us to, to act differently. It causes us to do different actions. The, uh, something else is make up your mind not to put obstacles in, in your friend's way. Make up your mind not to put obstacles in the way of others. Make up your mind not to put obstacles in your family's way. And, and what does that mean, a stumbling block or an obstacle? Well, there, it comes in a lot of forms. It comes in judgment. It comes in your words. It comes in criticism. It comes in sarcasm. It comes in, what else does it look like? It looks like, um, uh, you know, you're, you're not encouraging someone. You can always you can always turn your words into loving words. You can always turn your statements into supportive statements. And even if you're even if you're having a conversation, you know, I was having a conversation with my son yesterday about something, um, a behavior that needed to 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 change. He needed to evaluate something. However, I can do that in an encouraging way. I don't need to give him a criticism. And, and then how does that turn into an obstacle? Well, it's a, it's a criticism. It's not loving. He's focused on, on a critical aspect of his being versus um, having a loving response and loving guidance and then taking that information and applying it to his life. So obstacles are about uh, having a conversation with somebody and, and not... not um, not damaging them. You know, we say that we, we, you know, I, I, I've heard people say, well, I would never hurt somebody intentionally. And, and, and I, that is true. However, pay attention to your words, pay attention to the tone, pay attention to the words that you're using, to the actions that you're doing to friends and family. You know, are you, are you putting an obstacle in their way? Are you giving them an obstacle? Are you passing judgment? Uh, those, that is the opposite of loving actions. That that again, that doesn't mean that we don't, you know, if a friend calls you up and says, hey, I really need guidance on this, I need your advice, give your advice, but we can do it in a loving way. We can do it in a way that encourages them. We can do it in a way that lifts them up versus putting that stumbling block or obstacle in their way. We're gonna take our last break. When we get back, we're going to uh, to wrap up in the in the last few uh, action steps that I have for being more loving, and I can't wait to share. You're listening to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Hey, welcome back to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. So. So the the uh, the journey in all this for me was about loving my enemies. Uh, so it's interesting because when I when I was thinking about this, what kept coming up, and even in conversations with people, because I'll always um, you know before I do a show, I'll I'll talk to. Uh, to my friends and family, and I'll, I'll bring up the topic and we'll talk about, you know, how it impacts them and what they go through. And when I, when I brought up being more loving, what was interesting was a lot of the feedback was about, they were acts of, acts of love. However, a lot of it dealt with their personal relationships. So their spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend or their child, and it was very, uh, very specific. Like it was, you know, cook, their favorite, how, you know, I said to, I said to someone, how, how do you, how do you be more loving? How do you act more loving? And, and it was, you know, cooking my child's favorite dish or, you know, doing something nice for my spouse or, you know, letting them pick the movie and, and, and acts like that. And I, I don't want to, uh, I certainly don't want to downplay that because that's all important. This is a little bit deeper. This is about uh, you being loving because that's who you are. So whomever is in front of you really doesn't matter. Uh, this is about you being more loving and be, and, and that being a, you releasing really how you were made, what's at the core of, 
of what's inside of you. So it's it's uh, it's interesting because uh, you know loving your enemy is is what was a lot harder for me and was something that I wanted to to learn how to do because um, you know choosing a favorite dish of my child's to make it that's an easy love that's an easy uh, that loving my enemies was me you know letting God transform me into uh, it, it, you know having a spiritual transformation so I, I just wanted to to bring that up because this is this is more at a at a deeper level uh, because this is you know this is about about showing love to someone who, uh, if if you take a step back, you may not think that they deserve it, right? They, you may not think that they deserve your kindness. You may think that they don't deserve your attention, uh, which which hurts you, which moves you further away from from God, from our faith. So I just, I, I want to share that with you because this is why this is so special because this is, this is about you. This is, this is about you growing. This is about you feeling this intense, immense love. You know, I, I was, I read something this morning in my, in my morning prayers and uh, my morning Bible time. And it was right. God, blesses us because he loves us. It's not, it's not because we do something, he blesses us. He blesses us simply because he loves us. And I thought to myself, for me, that's my next level that I'm going to move towards is that I'm just going to bless people because I love them. Like that's just going to be the natural state. That's going to be just the way where, uh, and I'm, I'm being transparent now. There's, there's moments where where I decide on the, on whether or not I, I, you know, what my level of blessing is going to be based on the relationship, which is not kind, which is not nice. Um, but I'm being real and, and it's, you know, it's something that I want to grow away from. Um, but I thought like how amazing that is, right? How amazing that love is where you're just pouring blessings into this world because you love, you know, someone wants I once heard a conversation between a pastor and and his wife, and the pastor kept asking, you know, why do you love me? To his wife, wife, why do you love me? And and what I found so interesting was she could list all the reasons why she loved him, and and I thought to myself, well, what what if those things change though? What if you what if you said to someone, I love you because you know, your eyes are bluer than, than the, than anything I've ever seen. Well, eyes can darken or lighten or change. Um, but her response to him was, I love you because I'm loving. And I just thought that was so beautiful because it was, she just loved him because she's loving and, and, uh, they were brought together and, and they, you know, are, are willing to get through obstacles together and the joys and trials and tribulations of life. It wasn't, it wasn't because of an act. It's not because of good works. It's not because of deeds. It's not because of behaviors and actions. It's how God loves us. And so I just thought that was so beautiful and so wonderful that, you know, imagine if we had more of that in our world today where we just love because we're loving. And so just to close this out, part of um, the last action step is is to get to know your enemy, get to know the person. Uh, they have a mother. They have a father. They're a brother or sister. They were a child. Uh, you know, they are a, the child of God. They, they were created just, you know, they created in, in this world, just like you. And maybe a, a circumstance changed them, uh, an environment changed them, a trauma changed them. Uh, I don't know what it is. And again, it's not an excuse, but it's an opportunity for you to be more loving and by understanding that we're all human beings. We're the human race. Uh, we are all connected. We are all here for each other. 
and uh we're humans. And so the person that you're not forgiving or the person that you say that you can't forgive, it's another human being. The person who you say you can't show love to, that's another human being. Uh, so just give that some thought and give that some consideration. Uh, it's been life-changing for me and I'm so happy and so grateful that you take this opportunity to share with me each week. Uh, please write in, let me know. You guys from last week wrote in uh, a ton of emails about about uh, things and situations and circumstances you've been going through. And I can't wait to uh, talk through them all in the next coming shows. You can reach me at jenniferzellup at yahoo.com. Also reach out to me on Facebook at Jen Zellup. Just shoot me a private message. And thanks again, everyone. You've been listening to Thrive by Jen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Thank you for listening to Thrive by Jen Radio on transformationtalkradio.com. Tune in live each Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, as Jen shares the action steps and real stories from people throughout the country that will ignite you to stand in confidence, love from within, and be unstoppable at fulfilling your dreams. For more information, podcast downloads, and to connect with Jen, visit jenniferzellup.com.